Hi everybody, happy Sunday. Uh, it's a partly cloudy but very warm day here today. I tried to get out earlier to do some of my work. All I could do is hand watering because I had a computer problem this morning. Uh, after a uh, update of my Alienware, uh, I couldn't shut off the computer. So there I was online with Dell with my Alienware so-called expert. It took four switches to different people before they finally got me to the right person. So needless to say, this went on for a long while until they could hopefully have fixed that problem. So I thought, well, I'm going out later and uh, I'm having dinner with my son. So maybe I'll just make another video. I, I had promised a while back when I made the first video on true beginner tarot decks that I had this other uh, deck. So today, this is what I'm going to do. This is the deck that I'm going to open today and uh, go through because I'm eager to try it and you know, learn it and uh, I want to consecrate it and do all that with it. So I thought I'd share it with you. So the one that I did before was this one here, which is the Practical Tarot Wisdom. And I think both of these are very good pure beginner decks. And I think they would probably be very good for, for very young people who really don't have much background, perhaps, in uh, mystical or spiritual wisdom and, uh, you know, are having enough trouble just dealing with schoolwork and other things than to sit down and read and study diligently uh, tarot books. So I thought I would get a couple of these and look at them. And uh, so if you'll hold on a minute, I will take this deck and I move the camera and I will be right back. Lytle illustrations by Pamela Coleman Smith and recolored by Mary Hanson Roberts. So let's see what's in here. Nice slide out box. Oh, I, oh interesting. Okay. It has a nice little uh, fold out here about reading tarot cards. And it gives a whole explanation on the very on various methods, not all the various methods, but it says say that there are various methods of interpreting or spreading tarot cards, and gives very basic instructions here. Let's see, I think this opens up. Okay, here we go. Oh look, they give you a ten card ancient spread here. So I think you can see this here. So that, that's very good. People can just lay that out and use it that way. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Very good. Yep. And then there's a deck in here. Okay. So now I have my handy knife. You know, my dad, I, like to, I think I've said this before, but my dad always taught me to carry a knife with me. And uh, these little ones come in handy as a pocket knife in the garden because it has a little scissor, it has a screwdriver, it has like a nail file, and you can get them with different configurations depending on what you do. Oh, this is already open. Okay, I don't have to even open it. I thought I had to open that. Okay, so let's take a look at this deck. Okay, so it's a plain little, I guess they call these a tuck box. Okay. Okay, there's the card backing. Very nice backing on the cards. Okay. And this first card is a repeat of what uh, I read in the first pullout. And then they have, oh, here's some more. They give some examples of doing a couple of simple layouts. So there's a, uh, oh, interesting. They give a star spread at the bottom. I've never seen that one. Star, star spread. Let's see, a star spread. Okay, the cardstock is nice. It's flexible. I don't think it would be any problem trying to uh, get these shuffled. Okay, so I'll go through these here. Now, as you can see, there's writing on one side, and then there's upside-down writing. Now, unlike the other deck, this one gives you both the uh, reverse and the unreversed meaning to the cards, which I think is very good if somebody wants to do reverse cards. And I, 
you know, I, I know it's a lot to learn to try to learn reverse at the same time, and many people don't use it, but they also know what the reverse meaning would be, and they know if they're doing a certain subject and they know what the energy is around that subject, then they can bring to mind the reverse. But I think that beginners probably could use, like myself particularly, could use some help with that. So this one is the fool, and let's see what, the, I won't read all of these, but I'll see what this one says. It says, the fool, you are unpredictable, open, spontaneous, adventurous, a free spirit, and dreamer. You are free of responsibility by choice and do not like restrictions. You have the soul of an entrepreneur. Signifies the start of a new place in life. Trust in your own ideas and plans no matter what others may say. Okay, so that's the adventurer, the entrepreneur. But in reverse it says, you're childlike in some ways. You still have much to learn. Worry and fear blocks positive action. Don't submit to others' rules and demands of conformity. You do not recognize the danger you are in. You are close to ruin with crazy decisions, reckless actions, and foolish choices. Your ideas are not sound and may lead to catastrophe. Dum, da dum, dum. Okay. So that gives a lot of information on one little card. Now, granted, the, the photos, the pictures, the artwork itself is small, but you're still getting the gist of the rider weight. You've got the dog and the man at the edge of the cliff or the lady at the edge of the cliff uh, with her little nap pack ready to jump off into the unknown. Uh, so you do have the, the right cards there. Okay, I won't read them all. This is the magician. Well suited for business, etc. High tech fields, your risk taker. And then the reverse, very quickly. You may be selfish and manipulative in a relentless pursuit of money. Uh huh. So the ma magician can be a good guy or bad guy. Okay, and then we have the high priestess here. Inner peace and strength on the good side. Let's see on the reverse side. Emotional instability, clouded thinking, and recklessness. And these go on and on. I won't read them all. But you get the idea. So I think this is a very good beginner deck. Uh, I like the way the cards feel, and uh, I think they're going to be easy to shuffle no matter which way you want to mix the cards. This is the Empress card. Let's see, where should I put this here to be see, best see it? Okay, the Empress card. I don't think we all know what these cards look like. The Emperor, Hierophant, the Lovers. Again, all the, the pictures are absolutely wonderful in there. They are smaller, but there's a lot of information on a small card here. The chariot. So each card has the number. It has the name of the card. And you've got both uh, an upright and reverse meaning to the card. And you've got the rider weight. You've got all that wonderful artwork on there. So, and the strength card, the classic Lady with the Lion, again, classic Hermit card. So they didn't make any change, Does it doesn't seem like they made any change to the artwork other than making everything smaller here, but adding all of that wonderful information for rank beginners. Because I know when I started this a few months ago, I would sit out with all the books spread out in front of me. I printed out all these long sheets and made my own books from all the sheets I printed out. And, and it would take me forever to just look up the basic meanings. But this is such a good shortcut uh, because you can always in, de in depth later go back and read more about it. But this gives you a good quick reminder of what you've already read and what you know. Or if you don't know anything, it gives you a very good way to start. Hangman, Death Card, and this says, signifies either the metaphorical personal rebirth followed by great change in your life, or the literal death of someone you know. Also means renewal, personal growth through honest self-examination. End of an era, put the past behind you, Fear of the unknown of change and of being out of control. Focus on the essentials of life. Simplify. So there you have it. And temperance card. The 
Devil card. The Tower card. I call it one of the uh-oh, uh-oh cards. Let's see what they say about the Tower. It says, long-held beliefs and ideas are challenged. Overall chaos, sudden crises and misery, natural disasters, grief over a broken relationship. All aspects of your life are open to disaster. Take action. Trouble will end only after you get rid of something or someone. Later you will realize that these changes are for the best. What does it say for the reverse? Let's see. Okay. You will cause your own problems. Your freedom is threatened. You feel that you have no choice. You may be accused falsely. Loss of job, pride and prestige, disaster and the accompanying unnecessary suffering could have been avoided. Take action to stop trouble. Uh-oh, the phone is ringing again. I'll, I'll leave it for an answering. Okay, the star. I should have turned it off. The moon. The sun. I'll bet that was a robocall because they never leave a message. <laughs> Judgment. The world. I'm going through these pretty fast because most people know the Rider Weight deck who done it. And so this gives you a you know look at the card itself. But I'm not gonna take that much time to read all of these. But you can see that this is a very good little deck for real beginners. And frankly, I think I could find it useful too, like late at night when I just want to draw a few cards and I'm tired and I don't want to look at my books. I think I, I think I will use this quite a lot until I really learn the deeper meanings of these cards. Four of Wands, the Five of Wands, Six of Wands, Seven, Eight of Wands, Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands. Yeah, I would, if anybody asked me for recommendations, whether they'd ask a beginner like me, I don't know, but I would definitely recommend the Rider Weight. Because once you know the basic Rider Weight cards and you start getting into these kind of Rider Weight clones where they're using different names for wands and do different names for cups, you can figure it out once you know this system. You can understand what it is. Knight of Wands. Especially if they use anywhere near the symbols, you would, you would know what the card means, if they're close enough. Queen of Wands. And I like the colors in this deck. I don't know. They're not the colors that I have in my original Rider Waite, but uh, probably one of the later ones which I haven't opened up. I've, I've ordered some of the old, newer, but not quite brand new right away clones with a little better coloring. I shouldn't say better coloring, just more vivid colors. This is the Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. Three of Swords. Four of Swords, Five of Swords, Six of Swords, Seven of Swords. Some people call this the Spy card. I've seen this card come up a lot lately and when people are doing readings on Donald Trump. I'll have to do some of those. Eight of Swords. Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, and the Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, 
Three of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles. Let's see, I have to hold it this way. It's funny, I have to tilt it in a strange way here to make it look right on camera. <laughs> I still have to figure out how to get this camera right at this angle. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Tent of Pentacles. Some people refer to this card as family money. This one comes up a lot in the uh, Donald J. Trump things I've seen online. Page of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. There's the Ace of Cups. Two of Cups. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. Eight of Cups. And the Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Page of Cups. Knight of Cups. And the Queen of Cups. It says, attractive, practical, romantic, emotional, honest, devoted, careful with money, the perfect wife and loving mother, a nurturing personality, kind, sympathetic to the feelings of others. She has a positive effect on your life. Oh, sounds like the perfect mother, right? Let's see what it says in reverse. Okay, signifies a selfish, destructive woman who seeks to manipulate and control you. Uh-oh, the Cinderella god, uh, stepmother, right? <laughs> she has unpredictable reactions, is cruel and seeks revenge. Perverse, twisted, crafty, and dishonest. Immoral. She uses people and then discards them. Do not trust her. Ooh. Hope nobody had that mother. Okay, and then we have here, lastly, the King of Cups. It said, refers to a man over 40 with a warm, caring personality, extremely friendly and outgoing, emotionally balanced and considerate of others, responsible, others can count on him, gives wise advice. This man is in a position of authority and has the respect of many. In love, he is giving and trustworthy. That's the perfect husband, the perfect father, right? Okay, what does it say on the reverse side? I can only guess. Let's see. Indicates a male over 40, a secretive, elusive man who is plotting against you, openly bigoted and narrow-minded. This man holds a grudge. He may be involved in a difficult moral decision. You may lose your virtue, innocence, or money through this man. Do not trust him with your heart or possessions. Wow, I can think of some people like that right now in the public eye. Okay, everyone. So this is the quick and easy tarot. And the other one that I reviewed before was the practical wisdom tarot. Okay, can everybody see that well? I'm hoping, hoping that I'm not blocking this somehow. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hmm, yeah, trying to get it aligned. Okay, so offhand, I would say that if I only wanted to buy one of these, I would buy this one that has the reverse cards in it because I think it gives you more information. And uh, if memory serves me, I think the information it gave was a little closer to what I have read before. Uh, so I would definitely, if I had to choose one of them, 
uh, I would choose just this one. I like the cards. I like the, uh, let me see how they're shuffling. Uh-oh. <laughs> I said how they shuffle. Yeah, they're shuffling fine. Yeah, I like the size. They're not, they're not too little or too big. Uh, yeah, they're, they're good cards. Yeah. Card stock is good. It's uh, a little bit glossy, but, you know, it doesn't seem to be a problem. But they're, they're sturdy cards, you know, and they bend nicely so you can shuffle. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So you're not limited to shuffling only one way with these cards. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to be using these this week. So anyway, that's the end of uh, this deck and the comparison of this one with the other begin what I call the beginner deck. And then if you can see over here, I have on the table here lots of boxes. So uh, I have a lot more videos to make uh, so I can clear this table. I mean, many of these boxes of cards that I have are cards that you all probably either have or certainly know about, other than a few exceptions. Uh, but they're cards that have been so well loved and I was able to get some of them used or at very good prices and I wanted them as part of my collection because my daughter is involved in Tarot now and uh, will be getting more into it. Uh, she's involved in other mediumship things and she's working with a group there in Germany and they're doing amazing things. But I know she's going to get my whole collection and so I'm, when I'm buying texts, I'm also thinking of her, not just me, because these I will not have time left in my lifetime to, to really learn all of this to the level that a, a younger person would. But she will get them all eventually and have a great collection, and she can keep what she wants and trade the rest or sell some. But in the meantime, uh, I'm having fun. I'm having fun watching all of your videos, which is why I keep buying all these decks, because you're covering all these great videos. So I'm ending this with a bless you, have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday, have a wonderful week, and a wonderful life. And I wish you all things bright and beautiful, dear wonderful readers and, and visitors to my site. Take care now, everybody. Namaste.